Um, you know, Cam would be the first to tell you that part of the reason our punt team has had a good net or, you know, has been able to help in field position throughout the entirety of the season has been because of coverage. So um, even, like, you know, his numbers are great. He's had bad, you know, hits too throughout the year that have been covered up with a good tackle or what, ha uh, you know, what have you. So, you know, in that last week example, got to be better on the coverage end. Guys putting that, those those nets or those punts that were last week were from the midfield logo uh, plus 50 area, and they squirt out the backside for a 22-yard gain. Can't happen, inexcusable, and uh, we'll, get it, we'll get it corrected. So um, just uh, uh, making sure we're up up to speed on all of our details in the coverage game, we'll handle those issues moving forward. What was it about Kaimi that made you confident he could kick that 61-yarder? The same thing is always confident. He's a kicker. Uh, his job is to go out there and put it through the uprights no matter what the situation is. In an ideal world, you know, it's easier – it's much easier said than done, but in an ideal world, no no two kick is different other than maybe playing the ball differently based on the wind so um, or conditions. Uh, um, but uh, no, no two kick or no di uh, different swing or approach or mentality. It's always go out there with the same pre-kick routine and approach as you're going to hit any other kick, be it an extra point or a, a long try at the end of a half. What's your reaction, What's your reaction when you find out that the roof's going to be open? Um, just uh, let's go play football earlier this year did you start to see him get stronger as the season progressed um i think that you know he'll, he'll even attest to it there was should should be and was no effect on any of that uh anytime you come back from an injury once you feel you're ready to go out there your job is to go perform at the same level or you know growth whatever that may be as uh, as you were before so um i don't think there was any um kind of come back through it. I think once he was out there to perform, he had the green light. He was expected to be at full capacity for whatever we asked him to do. So. How much does making a kick like that help his confidence, and how does that help him going forward? Yeah, I mean, it was a big moment, okay? In, in reality and honesty, it was a big moment. It was a great kick, and, um, uh, you know, especially knowing that we had to alert our coverage package given that there was a returner in the end zone waiting if we did leave it short. So, you know, he knew, he's, he said, yeah, I had to get it there. And uh, I think that it's important for any kicker when they have their opportunities to take their shots and you hit it, you hit the game-winning buzzer beater in basketball, those do, you know, promote confidence. And I think that that hopefully will uh, continue to, um, you know, have that little juice in his game for sure. Frank, I don't believe Texas ever announced as early as they did last week the roof So having that knowledge ahead of time, and then if he get the kick with the roof open, was it open Friday? I'm, I'm sorry, Saturday. And then when you came out for the first time Sunday, how much studying did you do uh, knowing the roof was open? Yep, so we did have it open, you know, at a point where he's kicked in open air in, in the stadium to, um, you know, like uh, feel any different types of uh, wind direction, things like that, where it kicks off of one end and comes back into your face on this side and pushes it on the other side, et cetera. But I would say, you know, these guys are the best in the world at what they do. Every, every t uh, team's specialist, they go out every game. You know, we're going to go out on uh, a Sunday here in Jacksonville. There's projected to be some rain, some elements. Uh, you you know you take the information as you can gather at pregame and you move forward to it. So it's not a new adjustment. When we go out to practice, we sh uh, we're going out to practice today. We're going to see what it's what's uh, blowing like today. How that's going to affect our our punts or our kicks. Um, so that I wouldn't say it's anything new. We just you know approach it as it goes. When you're at home, majority of the time the roof has been closed and it's uh, obviously a controlled environment in there. So um, we just treat it like hey uh, the roof is open. If there's wind, we'll adjust accordingly. So. What happened with the uh, the penalty with John Weeks, 59-yarder, that one? that just seemed like there might not have been execution there on that. It was execution on it. I think um, uh, given the circumstance in the game, you know, it was a, a no different than um, um, offense going out there and trying to draw offsides. When you go back and you look at the film, is there anything that you can do differently as far as punt return? Last week they had a lot of punts that pinned you all within the 10-yard line. Is there something that you all can do? Yeah, you got to have great decision-making in the back end from the returner's perspective. We also look, that's a, that's a difficult job. When you're singled as a gunner, okay, on the punt team, when the, the punt team's gunners are singled, it's a very difficult job to get those guys handled. Um, this week we're going up against really three very good gunners and Ford, Clay Brooks, and uh, Daniel Thomas. So we have our uh, tall task ahead of us to defend on the perimeter to get ourselves a return started. In the plus 50, returns are few and far between. We were on the receiving end of a couple of those last week. Um, 
You know, anytime it's a field punt, especially when you got guys on the edge that can fly like Jacksonville does, you got to have those guys handled, uh, uh, neutralized to get the return started. That's a big mission for us this week going against Jacksonville. Those are their premier players are on the outside right there. We got to have our, our A game. So, good. Thank you. See you guys over there. Charge. He was already in charge of the offense. Do you, what changes do you have to be ready for under, under the circumstances? I don't see many changes that you know really affect you know what we do. Um, the guy speaking as a defensive coordinator, the guy that's uh, that was going to call the offensive call, still is doing that. So. It doesn't affect an awful lot. I think all of us in the profession, we've been in places where uh, firings happen, coaches leave, but eventually, I mean, they didn't cancel the game, so they're going to show up. We're going to show up. I think you get down to that. We're going to practice today, preparing just like we were before. What do you notice currently on tape, Trevor Lawrence versus when you guys saw him in the season opener to now? Well, I mean, I think as you look at all players, especially rookie players, uh, improvement. Sometimes the record didn't show that, but um, he threw some good balls when we played him. Uh, he would like to have some balls back. I think that's just kind of life in the NFL a little bit. But the, the same guy that was drafted number one, that's still him, and he has a lot more experience. It's just not about one guy, of course, too. Um, they, uh, they beat a good Buffalo team uh, that beat us. They they beat a good Miami team that beat us. So that's kind of what we're going on. And the second time around, you know, you're going to get, you know, uh, the best effort. And that's what we're planning for. He obviously was kind of viewed or as a, a generational type prospect. But how much do you think with any guy, whether he's you deemed a can't miss or not, it matters kind of just the surroundings uh, around him? Well, it's always a team sport. That's definitely the case. And uh, I think. You know, it's kind of pretty early in a career too. It's that's a big statement to make when when before a guy comes into uh, elite, the league, generational talent and all those things. There are good players that come into the league each year, and they need to be able to play. There's no guarantee on anyone, um, but you just go on ability. Trevor Lawrence has all the ability in the world. He's a mobile guy. He can make all the throws. Yeah, it'll help an awful lot if the supporting cast helps, and uh, I'm sure they will. Uh, you, you, you've talked, um, you've rotated your defensive lines for a long time. I'm curious with defensive end particularly, is, are there exceptions to people who stay on the field longer? What does it take for someone to be an exception? Well, I mean, you know, our rotation, of course, we're going to keep that inside, but uh, we have a history now, too, on how we do things, and um, the way you've seen the guys play is how we like to play them. If there are crucial situations, we like to have, there's a reason why we have a starting unit. Uh, but sometimes, you know, after a long drive or just the players playing on special teams, players just a little winded, uh, you make substitutions. And we won't put anybody in the game unless we feel like we can win with that person. And, um, you know, we're in a position right now, too, where uh, I think the talent, talent level is is fairly close at a lot of positions, so you feel comfortable playing more. Uh, James Robinson's been there a lot. He's rotated with Carlos Sainz. Eight carries, eight yards on Sunday. Would you expect them, especially in light of you, your guys struggling against one, to really emphasize the run in this game? I think you forget everything that's going on, just in general, them looking at us. Um, yeah, we expect everybody. Uh, they look at the stats. Uh, this past week, you just look at this past game, we gave up two big runs. Uh, if you take away those runs, I think we, we did a decent job. But um, our stats say that a team should try to run the football against us, so we have to prepare for that. Stats say the team should try to throw the ball over our head a little bit. We have to prepare for that. You never know we're going to cover the waterfront. And, um, you know, for us, though, we need to put in a, a good defensive effort. It starts with that, and that's what we're practicing for. Can you talk about, um, Eric Murray said that he expects, you guys know they're going to do a lot of an inside zone in terms of when they run the ball, but if you guys stay gap sound, you should be able to handle the, 
and that's been one of the areas that they struggle. Is that one of the focuses this week? Well, I, I think just talking about our defense in general, I think every time I've come up to the podium, I've talked about, Coach Kelly has talked about us being gap sound. It comes down to that. Um, you know, our we if everyone just does what they're supposed to do, I mean, we're going to have success defensively. I know offense is going to say the same thing. We just get every block. We're going to be able to run the football. I mean, that's a chess match. But I just know our success we've had when we played our best ball, it's been that. And for guys to just buy in to that, you talk team concept. That's what team concept is about, taking care of my job, having just that tone vision of that little area that I'm responsible for. If we can, can do that better, we'll be fine. You got, four, you got four players on the COVID reserve on your end of the field and Justin Reed working through practice. I mean, how, how much is your depth hit right now and how you work to do that? It's late in the year. So depth's going to be an issue. Uh, you just look at from the time we played them, um, you know, first game of the year, um, how many starters are we going to uh, line up with? It's big change, right? Depth is that. That's the issue. I think that's the case throughout. COVID is hitting our league. Injuries have, and we're no exception to that. But um, we have uh, a lot of guys that we played. And um, we're not to the point where, you know, we're, we can't play the football game. So we'll adjust. There's always next, next man up, and that'll be the case. Lonnie was playing a lot of corner. Is he a slot to maybe help you all at safety? One more time. Lonnie was playing a lot of corner. Is he a person you might move back to safety if you need him? We've got a lot of options. Um, you know, we've been – how many times I've been up here, you know, guys, I don't talk much about what we're going to do. We have a lot of options. You look at our history. We have a history now. History of Lonnie playing corner, Lonnie playing safety. We play guys in multiple positions. In life in NFL, you need to be able to play multiple positions, and sometimes it comes down to that. Gives you options. To um, uh, last week's game, you all had cut down on the big play, allowing the big plays to happen, and then against Seattle, it it happened. You know, they gave, you gave up multiple big plays. What are you all going to do to adjust to that? What did you see on film? I, well, you know, games are different each week, but um, I don't think um, you can really uh, tell exactly what, and you can put a label on somebody based on one game. Uh, we we played uh, good football for the most part the last month. Uh, have we given up some big plays? Yes, we have. What we're going to do is we're going to go to practice and work on those things. You, we're not trying to. Uh, but I think sometimes you can hone in on maybe it's not the entire group. It's a certain position, a certain guy, and you just try to get him better, and that will be the case. Hopefully we'll be able to stay in our gaps a few more times on those two big runs that they have and not let the you know the ball go over our head in a three-deep coverage uh, right before the half. I think we'll be able to take care of those things. Wonder when you look at Garrett's snap count the last two games, it's increased. What do you want to see from him in this game? Uh, just uh, the, the the you know normal improvements that you see from a rookie. Um, he made some good plays last week. Like what he's done uh, throughout. He's been patient, taking advantage of the opportunities he's gotten. And uh, if you continue to do that, you're going to get a chance to really show. And if you make a few good plays, you get more. It's like that. That's how we do it. You get an opportunity to get a few reps and you play well, you're going to get more. And that's the case with Garrett. I'm anxious to see him take another step this week, and I believe he will. Last one, Brooks. Uh, Coley said he, uh, that Malik Collins has been your most consistent guy um, on the defense line. What, what makes him consistent and why has he been so good for you guys? What makes Malik consistent? That's a pretty hard question, right? Uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly how to. Malik, you know, he shows up every day at practice. He's a coachable guy. Um, a lot of times, some of that has to do with talent, too. Uh, your best player should be the most consistent. Uh, but there are some others also. Uh, he's been around a little bit longer, too, you know, and uh, he knows what's expected. When you're a young player, sometimes you got to – it takes a while before you buy into just – if I just kind of do this and I have enough talent, I'll have success. I don't know exactly the other reasons why. I just know that. He's a student of the game. He shows up every day. He practices hard. He plays hard. And uh, we're glad we have him on the team. All right. Thank you.
Jaguars defense kind of this time and makes it compared to last one? Yeah, I mean, every time uh, we've played them since I've been here, they've been a, a, a group that's fast, uh, runs around. You know, you you really feel their speed at every level. Um, you know, with Allen up front, obviously with Miles uh, at the second level, and then everyone that plays for them in the back end, you know, can run, and you feel it when you watch them. And, and they run around, they're physical, they hit. Um, so it's going to present a good challenge. With Davian going out for the year here, how much, I mean, you've had to switch a lot at slot mm-hmm. in that position. How much does that change things for you all? Yeah, uh, you know, I think every week we're trying to, trying to, you know, even with Danny and even with Davion, just trying to find different ways to move people in and out of the lineup, uh, trying to trying to move people different different spots in the formation, um, so it's not so predictable as to where certain people are going to line up. So uh, I think we're just going to continue that. The only difference is that we'll be using you know different people. Can you talk about the positives that you've seen from Davis on last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, he did a good job. Um, you know, first of all, did a good job uh, handling handling stuff in the run game, getting us out of good or bad plays, uh, making some different alerts that, that that we asked him to do. And then, as far as uh, you know, pl- you know, play composed in the pocket, made some good throws. You know, particularly on the run, um, did a great job on that opening drive, moving down the field. So, uh, some some definite good things that we're looking to build on. And uh, you know, hopefully, we can just continue to improve at that position. What challenges present when you enter a game with just two running backs? Uh, yeah, I have to be mindful about about you know um, not wearing them out. Uh, you know, got to be smart as to as to how we're using them, not only in the run game and the pass game. Um, you know, don't don't want to rack up a bunch of unnecessary miles. You know, running downfield if, if we don't have to. Uh, but you know, I thought Royce and Rex did a great job on on Sunday, and and you know, obviously getting David back this week. Hopefully, hopefully we won't be running in that situation here moving forward. Nico Silva's not a touchdown, but he looks like he's getting more. God dang, he's been close a couple times, huh? Uh, Nico, no, yeah, no, no. He's he's got, he's got a couple shots in where he's been, you know, he got the OPI in week one, and then the one in, in Tennessee, I think, if the ball is, if it's called the other way, it's probably not getting reversed. But um, Nico's, we're, we're trying to, he's doing a good job doing everything we're asking him to do. We ask him to go in there, do some dirty work. We ask him to go block. Um, you know, obviously, you know, being a bigger body down the red area, trying to trying to find ways to, um, you know, take advantage of his skill set down there. And, and you know, he's a guy every every week you you see him when he's out there, especially since he's gotten back uh, after the Cleveland game after the injury. Uh, he's done a good job improving. So um, yeah, he's he's a he's a guy that that that's exciting to game plan uh, for and, and to prepare with. Coach, uh, barring injury, can you see him and Nico? I mean, I'm sorry, Nico and Brevin going forward being cornerstone for this offense. Uh, I would hope so. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I think uh, obviously Brandon's got a, a, a career full of production, and, and um, he's doing the same thing this year, doing a great job producing for us and, and making big plays, big chunk plays when we need him to. Uh, you know, hopefully Nico's and you know can can you know fit in that mold for us here moving forward. Anything else? Thank All you right. guys. Appreciate you. Thank you.